say again, please. Uh -huh. Oh, you're coming without a problem. Uh, it was plagued by uh, bad omens and bad luck from the very beginning. Uh, looks good here, flight. Good agreement. Years before the flight, when the spacecraft was being built, a damaged liquid oxygen tank was installed in the spacecraft. The tank had been dropped on the factory floor. A little piece of plumbing had prevented the normal procedure for removing oxygen after a routine test prior to the flight. And then on the day before flight, we filled up the tank again with liquid oxygen, and it was a bomb waiting to go off. This is the crew of Apollo 13. We wish everybody there a nice evening, and uh, we're just about ready to close out our inspection of Aquarius and get back for a pleasant evening at Odyssey. Good night. Actually, it was the end of the work day. We were fixing to go to bed after we did a few things to clean up, and the next morning go into lunar orbit and get ready to land. And then it was a large bang. When the explosion first occurred, uh, we didn't know what happened. And that just rang through the metallic structure. Oh, uh, here's somebody had a problem. I was in the lunar module, and then I went down into the command module. We may have had an instrumentation problem, flight. Roger. And we had a pretty large bang associated with the um, caution and warning there. We started to look at the instrument panels. Uh, one of the quantity gauges of one of the tanks was zero. That was the tank that had blew. I then looked out the window and saw escaping at a high rate of speed a gaseous oxygen because the explosion occurred on the first, the damaged tank, but that also ruptured the second tank, just blew the entire side of the spacecraft off. My immediate feeling was just a sick feeling of pit of my stomach, a disappointment. I knew we had lost the landing. And from then on, it was not a third landing on the moon, but a survival of how to get home. Okay, I want you to double check my arithmetic to make sure we got a good course of line. Go fly. How's the arithmetic? Stand by, we're checking. At the time, it's scary as the devil, and uh, uh, we were handling something that we knew was uh, out of control. And uh, every team that came on was dealing with a major set of problems to deal with. And they, they just uh, jumped to the task and they knew what they had to do. Okay, now let's everybody keep cool. We got the uh, limb still attached, the limb spacecraft's good. So if we need uh, to get back home, we got a limb to do a good portion of it with. One of the biggest things we had to do in the dying moments of the electrical system in the command module was to transfer the guidance system and transfer the angle numbers from the command module to the lunar module. And we only had about 15 minutes to do that. About 20 minutes after the explosion, it was obvious that uh, we weren't coming uh, to a landing in the moon, we were gonna go around it. Glenn had already been down in the trench with the trajectory guys and came up with uh, five trajectory return to Earth options. So we would not, we would have missed the Earth had we done nothing. So the first thing was to get us in the right direction to go around the moon. And that was the first maneuver uh, we made. We used the landing engine, the engine we normally would land in on the moon. Everybody seemed to be moving in the right directions without being directed. Everybody had a sense of what had to be done. The training guys brought the simulators up over there and the crews were over in the simulators tracking virtually everything they were doing. They were, every configuration change 
that was proposed to be done that was already being worked over in the simulators there. So you started getting answers from all these various directions. The command module was very wet. There was water everywhere. On every, you, in the lem, there's no inner walls. So you can see water on all the connectors, the wire bundles, plumbing, every turn of glob of water. And the command module, we actually had to get towels out to wipe off the instrument panel to see the instruments. We copied that report uh, from Jim Lovell of service module separation at uh, 138 hours. Uh, and there's one whole side of that big transmission. Is that right? Okay, copy that. Farewell, Aquarius, and we thank you. So it was a question of getting this entire world geared and oriented to one single job, get the crew home. Teamwork was necessary. Good leadership, initiative to think out outside of the box when things go wrong, how do we repair them? Those are the three things that were absolutely necessary. I was most proud of, of being in this team that knew what they had to do. And there was no doubt about it. Uh, the team completely faced up to what had to be done. In this case, it was a survival challenge that we were faced with. So there you are, we pulled that off.